Here's what not to do on your fitness or weight loss journey. And it's messed up because people tell you to do these things. Avoid them and I promise your journey will be so much better and more sustainable. A lot of these I'm speaking from experience. I do not have any formal credentials. So take this all with a grain of salt as you wish. All I really have is my own experience and everything I learned, but let's get into it. The first one, detox teas. You guys, detox teas. Why are we still doing detox teas? I will never understand. They are full of just powerful herbs and laxatives. All they do is make you your brains out. That's literally all they do. They are more dangerous. They they do more harm than good. And I am someone who did the Teamy Blends colon and skinny tea. Why are we calling something a skinny tea? If you have problems with your bowel movements and maybe tried it for that, maybe that's a different thing, but also that's probably a deeper issue that you should get fixed. Maybe your diet needs tweaking. Maybe you have something else that's a larger issue than that. But most of the time, detox teas have ingredients that aren't even regulated. They just make you go to the bathroom a lot and they can really expel a lot of water weight. So even though you may be feeling lighter, well, you might be getting dehydrated too. There's just no, we need to stop these. I feel like detox teas sound like the pyramid scheme of all weight loss tactics. They're definitely not a proven weight loss method, nor do they make you actually lose weight in the long run. They might make you feel different for a few hours. And if it's marketed as a liver cleanse, detox, whatever, your liver cleans itself. Okay, moving on. <laughs> this next one I actually saw on a weight loss video I watched right here on YouTube the other day. And that's actually what inspired this video. I was watching it and I was like, <gasps> why is she recommending people do this? Like this can be toxic. This is just... No. This person posted a video about her weight loss, what worked for her, great, but some advice she recommended was replacing your meals with smoothies. You might be thinking, Morgan, that's like not that bad, but that can be bad for the wrong person. I know one thing doesn't work for everyone. It's not a one size fits all, nor will it ever be. And maybe it's just the wording I find issues with, but replacing your meals with smoothies, here's my perspective, okay? The wrong person is gonna take this and have a smoothie that consists of like mostly spinach, maybe a little bit of protein and water or milk. They're gonna blend it together and call that a meal. Okay, that's not a meal. That's not sustainable. That's not to keep you full and this really could lead to more restriction i have been there and smoothies can be really great right they can help you get in extra veggies extra fruit whatever but they should not be replacing your meals because i just feel like that can be a scary path and a spirally road that just shouldn't be advertised smoothies are great they have their place but i wouldn't go telling people to be replacing their meals with smoothies that really just bothers me and doesn't sit well. I don't, I don't like that. If you would have told me to do that like three or four years ago, I would have done it and probably eaten even less and barely anything all day because of it. Next up, anytime you see a video, an article, someone start talking about lose 10 pounds in a week, lose 20 pounds in a month. I lost so much weight so fast, whatever. Just know the faster it happens, probably the worse. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Is. Because something about fast weight loss, which I have learned this through experience and more research I've done, of course, is that it's not sustainable, right? You cut calories really severe, you drop the weight really quick, but you can't maintain that. You cannot do that forever. And some people think too, like, okay, let me just like get these 10 pounds off and then I'll work at maintaining the rest or I'll be smaller and then it'll give me motivation to whatever, whatever. That's not how it works. That's not how you're going to do it. That's not how it plays out. You drop the 10 pounds, you'll probably regain it all back fairly quickly and oftentimes you can even regain more back than you lost. Say you lose 10 pounds in a week or so, a little bit of time goes by, you can't sustain that anymore, you might gain 15 pounds, more than the original 10 you lost. That's what these findings show, studying fast weight loss and people that do that. And I know it's hard, you wanna click, you want the fastest, the easiest, whatever form of weight loss, but you have to know that anytime you're trying to make a change like this, it is a lifestyle change. You just have to get it into your head that it's hard, it's a journey, and if you want to achieve it and make it last, there's no shortcut. There is no shortcut. And by doing these fast methods like this, you're gonna screw up your metabolism, you could lose muscle as well, you could get really weak, fall into some sort of deficiency, the cons are endless. The pros, well, you might look good for a week. And I think it's really tough on the mental. Really tough on the mental. The next thing I am not a fan of is when people tell you you should cut entire food groups, entire foods, entire categories. Of course, there are the exceptions. Maybe you have a gluten intolerance or a sensitivity or something and it's really bad for your stomach. Okay, 
that is different. That you probably talk to a doctor about, right? But people just telling you to completely cut things out, maybe it's for the better, maybe it's healthy, maybe they're like, hey, cut out sugar. You know, sugar's like not good, whatever. That's just an example. But my perspective all goes back to sustainability. If you can create a lifestyle and prove to yourself that you can incorporate some things that are bad, but you do really like, for example, ice cream. I love ice cream. I still eat ice cream. Not every single day. Not even weekly since I got the Ninja Creamy because that's like healthy ice cream. Then I do eat it weekly for sure. But I'm saying if you can prove to yourself that you can make room in your new lifestyle, this healthy lifestyle for these things, it is going to last you so, so, so long. And if it's something you like, you know, that's what life's about. It's about living and having fun and balance and these things in life should be enjoyed. I think cutting things cold turkey is just, I don't know, kind of dumb. And it, it never really works. I mean, there are the rare occasions that it works, but most of the time it just drives you crazy. And the fact of a lot of times if you can't have it you want it you know you want what you can't have I feel like that is relevant in a lot of categories but especially food again it's different if it's really bad for you or it makes you feel bad and maybe you just choose like hey I don't eat this thing not like I can't have this thing but I do think there's a difference in kind of those separate occasions that I'm describing. Do you feel? The next one, I feel like we're gonna get a little controversial here, and so that's why I'm saying take this with a grain of salt, because remember, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian or a trainer, so like, if you wanna say, Morgan, you're full of shit, you're wrong, you can say that, right? I'm just a girl on the internet. However, I kind of have an issue with people telling you, okay, all you need to do to lose weight is intermittent fast. There have been studies done that show this lifestyle can help people shed a few pounds, right? That's not the problem. The problem I have with it is I feel like the way it's been promoted by some people is almost like a fad diet. Like people say, oh, if you just wait till 1 p.m. to eat every day, like you'll lose weight, this, this, whatever, whatever. That doesn't work for everyone. Like it gives off the same energy in my head that, for example, a few years ago, the keto diet did right that was really big in like I don't know 2016 maybe and I feel like the way people talk about intermittent fasting just is that same vibe and I, I don't like it maybe it works for you but for example I am never someone who could do that I love eating breakfast I wake up every day I do water and supplements green juice and then protein coffee. First off, I don't think I could hold off coffee in general till 1 p.m., but second off, I don't understand when people say they intermittent fast, but they still have coffee in the morning because like, you shouldn't have coffee on an empty stomach, but you're doing that because you want coffee in the morning, but you don't eat later in the, I don't know, like, all of that math just doesn't math for me. And maybe you can rebuttal this in the comments and tell me why I'm wrong. That's fine. I am always open to learning. But I just don't like the energy of this. Again, I'm not saying it doesn't work at all for weight loss. There are literally studies done. I'm looking at my computer right now because I try to fact check everything that it has helped people lose weight. I'm not saying that it's not going to make you lose weight. But it's another thing that if it's not sustainable for you, don't do it and don't, don't try it. Like just don't start. Because if you do it now, you shed a few pounds and then you stop doing it, well are you just going to gain them back? Maybe. Part of it sounds kind of like calorie restriction. Maybe it's not because maybe you still eat the rest of your calories in the other window of the day. I don't know. I'm just speaking freely here. And I know this one's controversial, so. The next topic is tracking. And I'm probably not gonna say what you think I'm gonna say. I don't think tracking is necessarily bad. Yes, it is bad for certain people, but it's good for certain people. However, I really, really wish that we learned more about this in school growing up. I really wish that people focused less on tracking calories and more on understanding macros and what macronutrients are in your food and what they do for your body and how much of what is appropriate and things like that. I'm not completely against tracking. For example, if you're trying to build muscle, you need to be eating enough, right? Maybe you need to track that to know like, okay, I need, I need more. Tracking can be really bad if you know you're someone that tends to restrict your calories. Then I would say, don't even download the app. However, a lot of calorie tracking apps also provide you with the macros and that can be so important. And maybe that would help more people, for example, not be afraid of carbs. I definitely used to be. Which kind of leads into the next thing. Why are we cutting carbs? Stop cutting carbs. Some people will cut carbs because they think they make you fat. Carbs give you energy. Carbs are your body's main source of energy. I had such a zero carb mentality until I started getting into working out and then I understood like, wait a second, if I want energy and then to actually be able to do my workout and complete it, like I, I do need carbs. And more into that, fat 
also doesn't make you fat, especially if you're a woman. Fat is actually really good for your hormonal health. It's good for nutrient absorption and the functions of your body. If you stop eating fat, it doesn't mean you're gonna get really skinny. For example, what I mean by this, I mean, for example, an avocado is a really good source of fat. But when people think of an avocado, they don't necessarily think people who eat avocados are fat right so don't think eating fat makes you fat <laughs> of course some unhealthy snacks do have fat in them right like if you eat a bag of chips like you're gonna be eating fat and we know that chips aren't the most healthy food but that's why i just wish the education around nutrition was a little more universal than it is to summarize that don't be tracking if it harms you but don't think tracking's all bad <laughs> and stop cutting carbs and cutting fat next one i've hinted at but some people will eat as little as possible because they think that's gonna make them skinny. I belong to this Facebook group that's all about support for women on their weight loss journeys. It's a great Facebook page. People are really vulnerable in there. They talk about their issues. Other people offer, you know, this worked for me, solutions, whatever. But there are a lot of toxic behaviors in there. And a lot of the times, people don't know and they're not aware that these things are toxic and bad for you and not sustainable. So it's not necessarily their fault, right? Like, I keep going back to the point that we're not educated enough about this growing up, at least where I live. And that's the thing. They, they simply don't know. They don't know. So, like, I don't blame them. But there are so many posts about, like, I'm in this big of a calorie deficit. I'm only eating a thousand calories a day like why aren't I losing weight like I'm so whatever <sighs> severe calorie restriction is not gonna make you lose weight I mean it might right but I don't mean <laughs> in a good way weight loss is hard it goes back to the original point it is hard it is difficult something that can happen if you restrict your food so much and you eat as little as possible not only will you maybe drop weight quick and gain back even more like I mentioned in the beginning or your body might think it's literally starving. Your body is stressed. Your body doesn't know what to do and it might hold on to some of that extra weight, some of that extra fat. Your stress plays a large part of just your body's overall function and weight loss in general, fat loss in general. So if you're eating really, really little and not seeing your body lose weight, that's because your body's like, what the hell are you doing to me? And the thing is, yes, it is true. You do need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight. That's literally just science, it's math. But the key is, it cannot be huge. The larger it is, I was gonna say almost the worse it is, but on like the contrary, if it's really, really, really small, then it might not make much of a difference. But just know a huge, huge, huge deficit is not, not okay. If you were an adult female, you should not be eating 1200 calories. I feel like it's a very popular number that people think is like what you should be doing. Stop it, please stop it. And if you don't believe me, go to someone who is more credentialed, go to health, websites that are verified like go talk to someone because i guarantee they would agree with me and i know it's hard i know it's way more mental than physical a lot of this is just so mental and a lot of this is because we we simply don't know but that's why i want to help that's why i want to make this video that's why i make so many of the videos that i do i want to help i want to help you i've been there i've evolved so much and i want that for you too i'm so much happier now and you deserve to be as well the next one is working out for hours and hours or working out every single day basically just excessive exercise again people do this oftentimes because they want a super high calorie deficit they want to burn the most calories the fastest they can lose the most amount of weight the fastest again remember how unsustainable that is but also overtraining <laughs> overtraining is terrible when you exercise you're putting stress on your body now this is a good stress right the word stress sounds really negative it's not all bad when you exercise you're putting stress on the body specifically if you're strength training what happens is your muscle tissues get these little tears in them. It's nothing you can feel. I've done a lot of research on this because I've wanted to understand all this stuff, right? But so that's why rest and recovery are so important. During that rest is the time when your muscles heal and grow back stronger, grow back bigger, right? That's why over time you get stronger, you get bigger. Your muscles have to go through stress and then heal to rebuild and build up. So if you're constantly working out, constantly training, you don't get that time to recover. Your body's constantly just stressed and torn apart and not healed. You could put yourself at risk for injury. You might start performing worse and then you get mad at yourself because you're thinking, I could do this so well yesterday, why can't I do it well today? Well, have you let yourself recover? Rest days are great because they make you take time off and they 
help you give yourself the grace that you know you don't have to be going a million miles per hour every single day mentally and physically active rest is great right if you still need to move your body go on a walk do something like that but don't be going for hours and hours every single day and just doing so much because so much is not getting you further down the line doing so much can kind of set you back so it's really just counterproductive you're wasting all that time and you're not getting anywhere with it off of that something that i kind of struggled with in the beginning too was really only doing cardio i love walking right i'm a huge huge fan of the 12 3 30 i will always preach that there's such a low barrier to entry if you're new to working out maybe you join a gym maybe you have a treadmill at home and you're just not sure what to do incline walking is such a great workout and such a good place to start however it's a good place to start, right? It's not a good place to stay. Cardio does burn calories, right? And that's why people like it for weight loss. They wanna burn calories, they want that calorie deficit. But the more I dive into this, the more I learn, the more I evolve, the more I learn how important muscle building is. And that's why I've kind of shift being a super cardio girly now I'm doing a lot more weights and I really, really like it actually. I'm really happy I discovered the 12 through 30. I'm really happy it helped me lose weight in the beginning. It kind of opened the door to fitness for me, which is super, super incredible and amazing. And it changed my life and I will never bash it for that. But I'm also happy that I've started trying more things. I'm trying to get stronger. I want to build muscle. The more lean muscle you have on the body, the more your body burns calories at rest. So if you're concerned about burning calories, there's a fun fact for you. <laughs> it's also super important as you age. It helps with your bone density. Also, who doesn't wanna be stronger? Be better in everyday activities, have less risk of injury. Cardio definitely has its place, but also strength training does burn fat. It does so many things, and I never really was aware of it. It's not gonna make you bulky, which we'll get into that, but it lessens your risk for disease. Like there's just so many good things that come out of it. You look better, honestly, like if you have more muscle on your body, you're, you're you're gonna you're gonna look good like there's just no denying like you're gonna look good I'm not saying that people with less muscle look bad okay I'm just saying if you have more muscle and you look more toned like that is a great look if that's something you care about I guess my main point is especially in the beginning when you're trying to lose weight you say you're losing weight but most people want to lose fat right and so cardio only is not a good approach it burns calories which is really attractive to people who are really craving that calorie deficit because they want to lose weight right but strength is so sustainable and so good in the long run, also burns fat. And at the end of the day, who really cares what number you weigh? Wouldn't you rather have more muscle on your body, be healthier, maybe weigh more than you think you should compared to being really, really skinny, maybe weak, maybe less muscle, but you're at that low number on the scale. You know, at the end of the day, who really cares about that? I said in my last video, the scale i mean it like it's just kind of stupid to me similar to the detox teas taking a shot of apple cider vinegar every morning it's not gonna make you lose weight mayo clinic literally says it is not likely to be effective for weight loss yeah maybe it's good for your gut health i have apple cider vinegar pills in my cabinet right now and i've been taking them because i bought them when i was trying to lose weight in a really unhealthy way but like i'm not just gonna throw them away so i've been taking them right but i'm not doing it because i want them to help me lose weight so it's kind of similar to the whole detox teas thing all these little stupid tricks and hacks like just just know they're too good to be true if all you had to do is take a shot of apple cider vinegar every morning and you'd have way less body fat more people would probably be doing it right next up people saying like oh don't eat after 6 p.m don't eat after 7 p.m because all that food is going to be stored as body fat whatever if you're hungry just eat this goes again with just like calorie restriction. Like if you're hungry, give your body food, give your body what it needs and it will thank you. Don't starve yourself just cause you think if I have a snack at 7.30 PM, like I'm gonna gain weight. It's just not really how it works. If you're hungry, eat. That's what you have to take away from this. If you are hungry, eat. And if you're hungry, but like you're not really sure, have a glass of water, wait 15 minutes. If you're still hungry, then have a snack. Cause a lot of times if you feel like you're hungry, you might be thirsty too. But not eating after 7 p.m. isn't like the magic fix to just losing weight. Maybe that works for someone, but maybe it doesn't work for you. So don't feel like you have to do it. Next, the ever so famous that lifting heavy weights is gonna make you bulky and lifting lighter weights, but doing higher reps gets you toned. Who started this? <laughs> I probably believed it, right? I keep saying I've learned so much over the past little while. I'm sure I believe this at one point. Let's give it to you straight. Getting bulky takes a long, long time. Muscle building in general takes a long, long time. <laughs> Lifting heavy is not gonna make you bulky. And if you think you're starting to look bulky, maybe change your plan. But like, we're talking years. Like this, this takes a long time. When you're lifting weights, you're building muscle. 
right? Building muscle is gonna show up in your appearance, but also is losing fat. So basically you wanna increase the amount of muscle and decrease the amount of fat. Lifting light weights and just a lot of them isn't really doing either of those things. If you're lifting heavy, you're doing the whole progressive overload thing, right? Which I didn't know what that meant until honestly like recently. And it's really simple. It's just the idea that like say you can bench press 50 pounds one week and the next week maybe you can go up to 55 pounds. You're getting stronger and stronger. You're lifting more and more, right? That's just what it means. But so by doing that, by lifting heavier, you're increasing the stress on the body. You then allow yourself to recover. That You're then building more muscle mass. Lifting really really light and just doing a lot of reps isn't building as much muscle mass as lifting heavy and more muscle mass is gonna show through more and then if you work on decreasing that fat you're gonna look more lean like I don't know there's just no reason to really think that the whole low weight high reps is like good for toning like toning's not really a real thing I know you can say people look toned but doing a workout that's like an arm toning workout or like something toning like toning is kind of like a bullshit word I feel like, at least in my opinion, so we need to get rid of that idea. Maybe change our vocabulary a little bit. A lot of these things may work in the beginning, but a lot of them are stupid, are a waste of time, are too good to be true. If you like this video, you're gonna wanna see other videos about things I've learned throughout the past few years of my fitness journey, and I talk about this stuff all the time, so please subscribe if you want more. Thank you so much for watching. I'm always rooting for you on your journey. I will see you in the comments, and I hope to see you in my next one.